हेलो एवरीवन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द एडवांस्ड बिजनेस डिसीजन सपोर्ट सिस्टम्स लेक्चर सीरीज एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सेट अप आर डेवलपमेंट एनवायरनमेंट यूजिंग पाइथन एंड अ कोड एडिटर सो अंटिल नाउ वी हैव कवर्ड द बेसिक्स ऑफ व्हाट इज अ प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज the elements of programming language various classifications we have also discussed the tools compiler and interpreters and how they differ from each other and finally we have also seen that python is an interpreted programming language with dynamic typing so to further get the hands on implementation details of the business decision support systems we need to start developing our code base so to do that we need to first uh, get ready with a uh, development environment on our machines so today let us start by installing the python so usually there are three most popular operating systems like linux windows and mac os so we are doing this installation instructions on windows only but the instructions will only slightly differ for is a linux and mac os usually linux and mac os comes pre installed with python as a system uh, library and but windows does not uh, provide this language as a pre installed so let us first uh, see uh, how to install python on windows then we will install another software on windows which is visual studio code this is also from microsoft then we will set up that code editor this is a code editor so we will set up that using different extensions available the most popular extension which is officially supported by visual studio code team is python and then we will look how to use the integrated terminal available in this code editor after that we will try to set up the coding environment by changing or getting to know how to change the color schemes for syntax highlighting we have already learned what is syntax in a programming language after that we will see how to set up the indentation we need to stay consistent with the indentation setup because python follows white space white space indentation as we have seen in the last lecture after that we will also see the some of the most used keyboard shortcuts for while developing a code in a python environment so we need to set up the keyboard shortcuts in our code editor after that we will look into one of the most discussed topic in the python development environment is the development of a virtual environment so we will look into it what is the need of creating a virtual environment with for each project and then we will see how to do it so here we will use the vn package which comes pre installed with the as a standard library in the python installation but there are many different versions or different packages that can perform the same task differently like paypen etc also in the data science community we usually use anaconda distribution this anaconda distribution provides a different package manager known as conda which can also perform the environment management task for python packages but we will look into this conda environment uh, after some time if we build those data science packages using that anaconda distribution today we will only stick to the vn library after that we will create our first hello world program which is 
the classic program which will print hello world on your terminal. So, let us first go to this link and download the python package from the internet. So, this is the python official website and on this we need to click this download button. Here you will see different kinds of python versions like 3.12 which is a pre-release. We only need stable versions today. So, let us just click on this button download python 3.11.5. So, this will download and get stored in your downloads folder. So, go to the directory downloads and here we can double click this file. Now, you will see this new window. So, here there are two main options install now or customize this installation. So, for beginner we just click on install now, but do not forget to check this these check boxes add python.exe to path. If you use admin privileges when installing py.exe then it will install system wide. So, you can tick this as well if you are the admin of your system. Now, the setup is completed for basic python installation on your windows. So, you can close this and after that to check whether it is installed or not you can click on windows uh, right click on windows and click on run. So, here you can type this cmd command to open a command prompt and here you get this uh, command prompt window. Now, to check whether there is python or not you can write python and it will open up. So, it is this is the interpreter. So, here you are the interpreter is saying this is python version 3.11.5 which we have just downloaded and installed and after that here he is the interpreter is waiting for our commands. So, you can write like in the last lecture we have seen the Zen of python. So, you can write here import this. So, this is the Zen of python like beautiful is better than ugly which we have talked in the last simple is better than complex. So, now our python is installed. The next thing we need to do is to get a code editor and we will see why do we need that code editor after installing it. So, open google write visual studio code click on the link as code.visualstudio.com and from here download the stable build it is in the subtitle it is showing this is the stable build so download for windows so we are using windows 11 here in if you are using windows 7 or 10 it will work So, this is also downloaded. Now, you can double click this file. The first window asks for you to accept an agreement with the Microsoft. So, you can click on I accept the agreement and click on next. After that, check this address. This is the directory where the VS code will be installed. So, let us just keep it to default. Next, it will ask for a start menu folder. So, start menu folders are these folders like endnote here is a start menu folder. So, it will create a folder here for visual studio code or you can use this checkbox to not create a start menu folder. After that, you can use these check boxes also like add open with code action to windows explorer file context menu. So, what will happen is if you use your file explorer. So, on right click this is the context menu. So, here if you click on a file it can show the visual studio code here as well. So, for that 
you can use this option and similarly this option as well so it will the first one is for the file context menu the other is for directory context menu so if you want to open a complete directory in vs code then you can use this second option after that you can also create a desktop icon now it will summarize the installer will summarize all those things that you have selected and then click install so you can launch visual studio code now so this is the first window which you will see uh, it will ask you how would you like to see your visual studio code so these are some visual customizations you can do like this is dark modern in which it opens by default you can use this theme as well and these are some options that uh, you can check and do things but let's just stick to the default theme now our two main programs are installed right so what can we do is so let us first see what we need to do on visual studio code so for as a short term we will we will use the word vs code from now on so vs code provides vast library of extensions these things can expand the functionalities of the code editor so the very basic shortcut command you can use is control shift plus x this will open the extensions sidebar on the vs code application the beautiful thing about this vs code editor is you can customize anything as per your liking so you can customize the shortcut command as well but by default this is the command so we can also set up the indentation levels using vs code preferences menu so let us get a deep dive of vs code now so first we will create a directory desktop Moves. Let's go to the folder. Code. So here you can see open with code. So this is the feature uh, which we have selected in the installer menu. Now it will ask you whether you trust the authors of the files in this directory or as. or not so you can click yes i trust authors now you can create a new file from here or open a file if there is a existing file so let us first get to know what are different things in this editor so on the first row of the editor it is a menu selection row so you can use the file option to either create a new file or open an existing file or add a different folder to this workspace otherwise you can use these edit commands these are grayed out right now but uh, you can uh, see their working when a file is open similarly this is a selection menu view can change you can change your appearance you can change the layout of the editor by splitting this editor into half or right or you can even get three columns 
terminal is something like you have already opened the command prompt using windows plus r shortcut key and then writing command but here you can just use this control shift this tilde command to open the terminal so let us see control shift so this is the terminal which is open now you can write here python so this is the same thing which we have earlier seen now we can directly open this python interpreter in inside the visual studio code next is this is known as the activity bar so here this is the explorer which is by default open now it is showing that there are no files existing in this directory so if you want to create a new file you can right click here and create a new file so i am giving a name first dot this is the extension of python py so if you just enter this is the first python file now it has already opened this in the right side of the visual studio code you can see here we can close this welcome tab so here you can open multiple files here and each file will get its space in this tab bar so let us create a different file with different extension like read me dot md so this is a different kind of file md stands for markdown so markdown is nothing but different kind of markup language and it can used to decorate your documents easily so we can also create a different file here like text file dot txt so all these files which we are creating they are directly getting opened in the visual studio code and these files are being created in the same directory from where we have opened this visual studio code so you can see here in this code directory these are the three files we can see which we have created first.py is a python file the readme okay let me so this is a python file first.py this is readme this is a markdown file and this is a text file these three files we have created now open the visual studio code again so let us close these two files and this is uh, coming back to the activity bar so this is the search bar you can search anything and replace it with something else if you have a large code base in your file then you can do a simple search and replace option from here also using click and point options otherwise you have shortcut keys for those as well next this is the source control window we will touch upon this options as well in the later parts of the lecture series this is the debugger and you can use a debug debugger inside the vs code as well and we will see uh, the how it works in the final decision support systems in the complete decision support systems which we will create the last is the extension so you can see that here uh, it is showing in brackets control shift x so this is the default keyboard shortcut so you can either click on it and it will open otherwise you can we here open this explorer sidebar and now i am using the shortcut key control shift x so it will open directly here now either you can search python here and it will search for all the extensions with the name python in it and this is the first official release from microsoft for this programming language you can click on this install button to install this extension inside this vs code so it will say that it is installing okay so our extension has been installed now how to check is let us just see so it is showing three different options like switch to pre release version uh, by default it will in install the stable release and the first option is disable you can either enable or disable this extension from here only otherwise you can also uninstall it if you are not 
going to develop using python in vs code you can use many different programming languages inside vs code by using their particular extension so we have now installed this extension So now, since we have almost installed our development environment, now we need to start coding inside the development environment. So before that, we first need to know few things about Python, which is a kind of controversial because it needs manual uh, installation efforts. So for that, we know that I have discussed earlier that some of the operating system usually comes pre-built with python like linux and mac os and now we have already installed python in our system so what happens is python comes with some standard libraries and its packages so let's say if you install other package a third party package you have two options either you install it system wide or you can install it in a different environment by creating a secluded space in your uh, developing machine and then install that package so that we can isolate it. So let us understand it with an example that uh, if we all have visited a library in our life. So let us say if librarian keeps on buying the books but do not arrange it in a well manner. So what happens is you visit the library and you will try to find a particular book in the library and if you ask the librarian he or she will ask you to search for it because the library is still completely disorganized so it will be very hard for you to find a particular book and the particular edition will be very hard to find so even if you find a book it will be very hard to get a particular edition like version edition 3 or edition 4 of that book. The same goes with the python as well. So what happens is the standard uh, installation of python has some packages let us say xyz package. This package is available in standard installation. which is system wide. So when you the day you have installed xyz package this would have come with its own version let us say abc. Now after some few days you start creating a different project and for that project you again need this xyz package but an advanced version of xyz package which has been updated in the library by its developer. So what you will do is you will install a new xyz package with version def this is just term this will be usually in number so let us go to version 1. So this you have installed in version 1 then say you installed version 2 of this for the new project requirement now your new project will work but the problem stays with the xyz package version 1 because it has been overwritten in the standard installation why because you have installed this version 2 so all those other other packages that depend on version 1 will get broke. So here is the main problem. So what happens is developers of this language try to create a solution for this. So what they suggest is always when you are trying to create a new project you start with a secluded environment in your developing machine. So for this we will use vnv 
manager so summarizing all these things so python has a very nasty dependency management so to ensure all dependency pulled by a package are compatible with the test of the environment we need to manage different project environments so this is the property which we are talking about is isolation we need isolation of various packages that are being installed because different projects require different python versions so next is how we are going to manage these multiple virtual environments so standard installation includes vm tool for managing we can use the vn command on the terminal which is python 3m vn my n so here this is the name of the tool and this is our custom directory or the environment name that we are defining so user can define any name here at my n so these are the options of these command v n and my n so we will always activate our custom environment before building our applications so let us create first uh, custom environment so we will open our visual studio code and here let us first exit from our interpreter by writing the command exit and open and close brackets now you are again into your directory so you can use cls command to clear so let us write the same command which we have discussed in the terminal of the vs code here so this is python Okay, let me click it again. This is Python space hyphen m name of the tool v n space my underscore e n v. Press enter, and it will create your new Python environment. So, what this command has performed is, let us open the explorer from here, and we can see there is new directory my underscore env in the same uh, directory which from which we have opened this visual studio code so 
let us look into that directory so this is my env now here are three different folders and we will discuss about these three folders what are the contents of these three folders so here this scripts folder is uh, very important these activate files and deactivate files will be useful for activating or deactivating your environment so let us go again to visual studio code now here we have just created the environment but we have not yet activated the environment so to do that you can write here so to activate it write this command on your terminal so let us activate our environment so this is showing my underscore env environment is activated now we can see which python it is using by using where command where python so this is not showing uh, the output because we are using a powershell so from the terminal window you can select the command prompt option and now a command prompt has been opened here so again let us activate the environment in the command prompt using the same command and here you can see that our environment is activated now right where python so it is showing three different addresses the first one is the current directory's address the next is the system wide location of the python so now we can see that we have different pythons in different environments so let us clear the screen now to install a different package let us say a request package very widely used you can write python m pip install requests so it will collect the request package from the internet and install it in our environment which is my underscore env now you can also open this my env directory open the lib subdirectory in the sites package you can see request so it was not earlier here so let us install one more new package and see whether it is installing here only or somewhere else so you can first see that we are going to install numpy from the internet but here no subdirectory has been named as numpy n u m p y so let us install it you can use the previous command by using the up arrow and we need to just change the name of the newer package numpy press enter so it is now downloading and now installing the numpy package now it is showing that it has been successfully installed and you can see here that the numpy directory has been created so this is how you are going to install or the required environments in your custom built environment and you have the option to keep this directory inside your project or keep in a single location where all your project environments reside so these are two different kinds of options you have so let us now see what this code editor allows us to do so first of all we can open command palette using control shift and p command so this is the command palette you can write most of the commands to search and directly open it so first of all we will be opening up the color schemes 
these are the different color schemes now just changing using the arrow keys on your keyboard you can see that the complete colors of these of your environment code environment will change now why this is useful is because this will change the colors of the syntax while you are writing the code so syntax highlighting is a very important property that is being provided by these code editors so see these are the different options we will stick to monokai for our work and we can also see the various command shortcuts by writing keyboard shortcuts so these are all the shortcuts that are defined by default in the vs code you can search here for opening extensions so this is the extension show extensions this is control plus shift plus x now you can change this by double clicking it it will ask for press the desired key combination and just press enter so you can change it here as well so to check for any kind of keyboard shortcut you can come here so let us discuss about the three different uh, sub directories created by the environment command so these were the bin directory which holds the files that interact with virtual environment the next sub directory was include so it stores the headers that are used to compile some python packages the last sub directory was lib so it holds a copy of a python version along with a sites package directory where each dependency gets installed so by using these virtual environments we get this important property of reproducibility using the freeze command we can get the details of all the packages installed and environment with its dependencies so what it is saying is that let us say you have created a project and you are using custom built python virtual environment for that project and now you have completed your project and you want to share it with your team so what happens is your team does not know which version of the numpy or request package you have installed in the environment so to ease out this process you can either share your complete project directory which can get very large or you can just tell the team members that this was the actual version number which i have used in my project environment so they will only use that file which stores all these version numbers 
and they will install those packages so that they can get the exactly same Python virtual environment for their use to get to see or review your code. So all this process can be automatized by using the freeze command available in the Python environment. So let us see how it happens. So we can use this command python m pip freeze. So it is showing that these are the different things that we have installed like we have installed the request library here and it was having the version of 2.31.0 and numpy was also installed which was 1.25.2. So you can use these details and store it in a different requirements file and share this with your team so that they can install all these packages. So let us now create our first hello world program. So there are two ways to code in Python. Either you can write everything in the interpreter mode by calling this command python on your terminal and it will show these three arrows and is asking for the next command. So you can write any command here and it will execute by first checking the syntax and semantics of that command and then will show the output. So let us write the very basic hello world command by using the print function which will print the string which we provide to the terminal. So P R I N T print start the bracket opening bracket use single quotes or double quotes we are using double quotes here so double quotes hello space world close the bracket. So by pressing enter it is now showing that hello world is being printed on the terminal. So this is the most basic example of a command on terminal. The same thing you can do use by creating a script file. So let us now create the first script file. Hello world, hello underscore world dot py. py. Now just write the same command here print hello hello space world so we have written our first command and the tab bar is showing this circle filled circle here which is showing that we have modified this script but have not yet saved it so to save this file we can press control plus s on our keyboard and now it is showing the crossbar it is indicating that uh, we have saved our file now this file is also available in our explorer and is also available in the directory hello world so to run this file you can first need to get out of the interpreter by writing exit open and close brackets and here you can write python hello so i use the tab command to auto complete the name of the file python hello world dot py by pressing enter it is showing hello world so these are the two different ways of using the of writing the code in python now you may ask why do we have two different ways. So what happens is when you are testing and developing your code line by line you can use your interpreter by using this python interpreter available in terminal. You can write some short code then test it whether it will work or not and then go to your script file and create a large code base here. So scripts are usually for large codes and you the interpreter will then interpret each code line line by line. So also you can see here that this is the function built in function print and this is the string which we wanted to 
print on our terminal. So, we can do all of these stuff, all of creating our scripts in a basic notepad file as well. Like uh, I have created this text file dot txt here. So, let us just create a new file here. text document and give this a file name new code. Now, this is a text file. If you change rename this file, it is not showing. If it is not showing the extensions in your explorer, what you can do is you can click on view, then go to options, change folder and search options go click on view tab and uncheck this bar hide extensions for known file text type. So, now you can see the complete file name right. Now, rename this file and change the extension of this file by changing it to p file. So, now this is this will ask you if you change a file name extension then file become unusable, but it will be usable. We have just changed the extension name. Now, it, it is using the python extension. So, if you try to open it in notepad, now we have opened the same new file new code dot py in notepad and just write the same command print hello space world space from space notepad. Use control s or the file menu to save this file. So, we can see that we have created a new file using note notepad and if you try to run this file in the same environment by using the command python new code dot py. So, now we are running new code dot py from our terminal inside vs code, but you can also use this command prompt here which we used earlier. So, from anywhere you can just start a python environment and run this file by pressing enter and now it is doing the same thing hello world from notepad. So, we created this file from the notepad and it is running as usual. So, now why install a new software like VS code then configure it to your liking and then start coding. The reason is that all these color things this print is in green color then hello world string is in yellow color and the brackets is in dark yellow or some light brown color. So, these are the syntax highlighting colors and this will be very useful when you have thousands of lines of code and you want to understand by just looking at the code what this is. So, this is differentiating between print and hello world as saying that print is a built in command that is known by the interpreter, but hello world is just a simple string which you can edit as per your liking. So, with time as we increase the lines in our code base, we will get to know the functionalities of visual studio code better and how it helps us in more than one ways and why we should not keep on writing our code in notepads. So, thank you all and we will meet in the next lecture where we will understand basic statements and variables available in python and further things that we need to learn to get the understandings of how python code works and how we need to create much better and improved code to create a complete zn support systems thank you